Hello everyone, welcome to the info session on Imagine the Future competition that is run by Shell. Energy challenge and the competition that we're talking about today. There is a concept in Shell and a campaign that's called Make the Future. And this is all about thinking about the future, thinking about the energy transition and what energy will look like in the future and how people are going to live and work and learn around that. We are already in an age of transition and volatility. We have intensified economic cycle, we have political and social instabilities, we have environmental challenges, demographic transitions, we have emerging resources as well when it comes to energy. And all this feeds into the energy challenge that we're facing today. We have a growing population. Population is expected to increase from 7.4 billion today to more than 10 billion by 2050. And coupled with that is a rising demand for energy. You will likely see a global energy demand to be almost 60% higher in 2060 than it is today, with 2 billion vehicles on the road. Today we have 800 million only. We will need ongoing supply and that supply will not only be from hydrocarbon resources, it will come also from renewable resources. And while doing all this, we need to think and manage the climate change and its effects on human life and on the environment and on the earth as well. So we're looking as two people are thinking about the net zero emissions that are potentially achievable as a social ambition also in relation to the Paris uh, Agreement, which I'll come to later. Given this, Shell is thinking also about a lower carbon future and working towards a lower carbon future. We continue to invest in oil and gas to meet the growing de demand, but we also are bringing cleaner and burning natural gas to a wider market. And gas is a much cleaner fuel than other alternatives. We're managing the greenhouse emissions from our own operations. And we are also building the new energies business and looking how to make that profitable and to incorporate it into the energy mix. Coming to the competition and the scenarios. Why do we use scenarios and what are scenarios exactly? A forecast basically assumes that we have the present today, we have one path and we will get to the future. And this basically discounts any uncertainty and discontinu discontinuities that are inevitable, and that are happening today. The energy sy system is complicated. There are mega forces and trends that are happening, the driving forces that cannot simply be predicted in one linear line. The energy transition is one of them. The digital revolution is another one of them. Those are major disruptions. So the past cannot and does not predict the future and we're very aware of that and then the conclusion out of that is that the forecasts are inappropriate so we cannot depend on forecasts so what is the alternative to forecast the alternative is in our view employing scenarios now shell since the 70s has been employing scenarios, has been coming up with scenarios, looking at the different trends, looking at the driving forces and coming up with different scenarios. And we believe that this has been a very useful tool for us. This is mainly driven by that we have radically uncertain future. There is a complex future, it needs agility. You need to have this scenarios thinking going on to help you with decision making. And scenarios, as I said, are distinctive shell capability and we would like to see those employed in thinking about how the future is going to look like for energy. And what scenarios do basically is that they, they don't look at probabilities, they don't look at what is more likely, no. They look at the different driving forces, the different uh, routes that those can take and then come up with equally plausible multiple outcomes. So in the scenarios, in the competition, you're expected to look at the driving forces, you have a focal question, and you're gonna try to answer it by coming up with several scenarios. They, they are equally plausible. Each one of them can happen, but each one of them goes into a different direction. If we go into 
gener very generically, what will more and cleaner energy for or urban homes look like in 2050? How will residents live, work and play? How would you go about creating the scenarios for that? First step, you have a focal question and I'll come specifically to the focal question of this competition. Focal question, you think about the question. The step two is you look at what are the driving forces in this that are affect this context and this question. So the driving forces, one of the driving forces would be urbanization, for example, or they would be technological advances, or they would be um, a global political drive to reduce CO2 emission, those type of things. Or they would be social disruptions, political disruptions, um, the um, breakdown of certain political alliances that would be affecting industry. All of those are driving forces. Step three is basically to think about what are the critical uncertainties? When you brainstorm all the driving forces, what are the uncertainties around those? And how are those going to affect your frameworks and your scenarios? You take those uncertainties together with the driving forces and you come up with the scenarios framework. And out of those frameworks, you think of several scenarios and when you do have them as high level concepts, you start thinking about the details. You start contextualizing them. You start creating the stories, the scenario stories around them. And then you can go back and reiterate and, and think, look again at your focal question and think, okay, do these stories answer this question or not? Do I need to rethink about them? Are there certain driving forces that I need to re-examine? And then you do that, you do that iteration to refine the story until you have something that you think is plausible and you can tell a story with. The focal question for the competition that we're looking at today is what will more and cleaner energy for your city look like in 2050? That means how will the residents of this city live, work and play? The city in question is up to you to choose any city in Egypt and then you just imagine what it would look like in 2050. Not only on a high level, what is happening with the city or is it urbanized, is it cleaner and so on, but also give us a feel of what does the residents life look like? What do they do? How do they live? How do they commute to work? What do they do for work? How do they uh, go about recreational activities? This all feeds into your story. And the more contextualized, the more vivid it is, the, the easier it is also for the audience to connect to it and to um, contemplate its plausibility. You go into details, what does the city living actually look like? How do you experience it as an individual or as an employee? And more importantly, what are the trade-offs that you will need to make to have more and cleaner energy? Because this is all about the energy context. There is an energy challenge. We need to mitigate the, the environmental impact. We need to look at the rising population and we need to supply for the rising demand. So what are the trade-offs that you would need to do to achieve this, basically? And what is the impact on your work, your transport, your energy use, your accommodation, the health, the education, shared economy? All of, all of those things are elements that need to be considered. Most importantly, in this competition, you need to tell us about the pathways. How do you get from where we are today to this point in time where you have your scenario in 2050? what needs to happen for us to transition ourselves to that future that you're imagining with us today. The Shell Scenarios team has been working, as I said, for decades in coming up with scenarios. At the moment, I would like to refer you to the scenarios, to our latest scenarios that we've developed over the last few years. And those are going to be very helpful. I would recommend that you go through them and look at what they're uh, saying in terms of different multiple scenarios and look at them and see what the energy scene could look like. Now we have three scenarios. 
we have a scenario and think of those also as lenses uh, by which you look at the future we have one that's called mountains one that's called oceans and the latest one that's called sky those are all accessible on the shell website and very quickly if i can tell you about them the mountains is really about social stability long-term view social stability influence and con is concentrated among already powerful elites and advantages brings more advantage okay the economic development is slowed down because of rigid because of the rigidities in structures and institutions so this is one option this is one scenario as we said before it's not one path to the future we have multiple options and multiple scenarios the other scenario which is oceans it basically terms about talks about innovation about reform about more fluidity in the system there is rising aspirations that drive people to power that are emerge there are emerging interests that are different than the current structure that we have and the core reforms that take place in that scenario they unleash growth there is more expectations from the further reforms as well so those are the two main scenarios. The latest scenario that Shell has developed is the sky scenario. And the sky scenario is basically all about how do we achieve the goals of the Paris Agreement? How do we keep our carbon emissions intact to achieve the environmental goals? The sky scenario is technically possible, but it is very challenging pathway for society to achieve it because it needs political will, it needs social changes as well. So I urge you to check all those scenarios and to look at them in your process of thinking about your developing your own scenarios and what the challenges and the trends could be. A few pointers before I conclude is look to form diverse teams. When you work in your team, it is very important to have different perspectives. Different backgrounds will bring in different perspective and that will help you in creating the details around your scenarios. Also, you need to communicate the logic. You don't need to only come up with a scenario, but you need to be very clear as to how do you get to that scenario from the world we are in today. This is important for you to be able to tell the story. And it's important to have a rich story. It's important in terms of communicating it to your audience and in terms of making it plausible, demonstrating that this is actually a plausible scenario. This could very much happen because we've thought about all the details and what everything should change for this to take place. Look for weak signals in the present. Look for things outside of the mainstream that could become a trend in the future. There are always pockets of the future in the present. There might be things that are not happening today in Egypt, for example, but they might be happening somewhere in California. They might be happening in Tokyo. They might be happening in Scandinavia. Something very small, some breakthrough, some uh, advancement, technological breakthrough or something, or some way that people are living today or starting to live today that could become a mega trend and that is plausible that it will become a trend or have an impact on your scenario in Egypt in 2050. So those are all things to think about. Uh, I'm sure when you go through scenarios more, when you read more about the energy, uh, transition about how we are looking to have cleaner energy and more energy in the future you can also think about the questions that I've put forward today um, you can refer at the end of this video you will find uh, the link to the website where you will find more details about the competition and about scenarios uh, but I wish you the best of luck and I hope that you I hope to see you uh, in the competition uh, this year and we look forward to more bright ideas uh, coming out of uh, Egyptian students this year. Thank you very much.